Hello class. I'm getting ready to, to do a recording for section 9.2, uh, solving linear equations ax plus b equals c. And this begins on page 97 of your 410, math 410 workbook. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is just go over these steps for solving the equations. And you want to try to have these um, learn or memorize. When you take your test, you can always use the, the first sheet of each lesson because they always have rules and things to help you remember. Um, but it's, it's good for you to try and memorize and learn the steps as well. But you notice here, the first thing they say is they want you to combine like terms on both sides of the equation, okay? Um, really, there is like a step zero above that. If I put zero here, really they want you to do any distributive property first. If you have any distributive property, we would like you to do that first. And I believe what happens is, I believe what happens is that in section 9.3, they will have distributive property. So I think in section 9.2, you're not going to see any distributive property. So that's why they started with just combining like terms on both sides of the equation, the left side and the right side. But, but really, if there's any distributive property that needs to be taken care of first, then you look at the left side of the equation. If you can combine anything, you want to do that next. If you look at the other side, you know, the, the, the left side, then you look at the right side. If you can combine any like terms, any like variable terms, any like constant terms, you want to do that next. And then step two says you want to use the addition principle of equality. That, that means you want to add opposites. So, you know, you're going to use, I, I say use the addition property or use the subtraction property. You want to use opposites and move. That's what we do to move terms across the equal sign. And then after you've done that, exhausted that, then step three is, okay, go for the multiplication property or the uh, division property. And so if you have to multiply both sides of the equation by something, it's because you, you've got to multiply by its reciprocal, the reciprocal of the coefficient. Okay, that's, that's if you have a, a fractional uh, coefficient. Let me write that down here. So when you find yourself doing this, multiplying both sides of the equation by the reciprocal of the coefficient, you would find yourself doing that because you have a, a fraction coefficient. And if you and then if you find yourself dividing, dividing both sides of the equation by the coefficient, you would do that because um, you would find yourself dividing because you have an integer or you have a decimal coefficient. So then you have to divide both sides by the decimal coefficient or divide both sides by the integer coefficient, okay? And then, and then the last thing is like a little, a little check, check your answer. The way you check your answer is whatever you get, like B equals a number or X equals a number, whatever you get, you wanna substitute that number, uh, uh, substitute it for the variable in the original equation. So you substitute your answer into the variable, and then you do your math, and you, you're interested in uh, like the left side should equal the right side. So the left side So the left side should equal the right side, okay? Um, 
if if it checks out, if if your answer is a solution to the equation, it should check out. Um, looking at some notes here. I wrote down some notes and I'm not sure. Let's see what I had some notes written down here from one of the class meetings. So let me see if I need to emphasize that. I think, we'll, I think we'll be okay. I think I was, I remember what I was referencing there, but I think we'll be all right. I gotta write that down. I was emphasizing the steps. Okay, so if you haven't, if you're still writing that down, you can pause and write it down, but I'm gonna continue on. And remember in your learn, you wanna spend 15 minutes in your learn, going over things. And... Let me start with these examples here on page 99. See, your workbook has some practice problems from your ebook. I'm going to go over these five, six, seven, and eight. So, with number five, it says, um, it's my light, extra light there. It says, uh, solve each equation uh, 3x plus 11 equals 2. Okay. So remember your, your goal is you want to solve for x, you want to isolate x. So um, I wouldn't work on the three yet. You are going to need to do some work on the three, but I would first focus on that 11, isolating that three x by getting that 11 out of the way. And you want to move it to the other side where you have that constant of two. So the way you're going to move it is by doing opposites. The opposite of a plus 11 is a minus 11 and then your 11s fall out uh you know that a number plus its opposite zeros out so that's going to those are going to uh, cancel out because a number plus its opposite zeros out so you know that 11 and a minus 11 will cancel out. And you're left with 3x equals. And then over here, you have a 2 and a minus 11. Okay, That's like a negative 11. Remember, there's always like an imaginary little plus sign here. So when you stack them up, it's always like a little plus sign. So it's like 2 plus negative 11. And that's uh, rule number 2. You're adding two numbers with different signs. So remember, you want to actually um, subtract, and then you want to uh, keep the sign of the number with the larger absolute value. Remember, I caught LAV, the larger absolute value, larger absolute value. So you're going to do 11 minus two, which is nine, and it's going to be a negative because um, the 11 has the larger absolute value. 11 is a bigger distance, uh, 11 units as opposed to two units from zero. And that happens to, 11 happens to be negative. So it's gonna be a negative nine. And then uh, now you're going to finish that. Now you can work. Now you can work with this um, three. Now you can work with that three there. The coefficient. That's that's a, a integer. It's not a decimal. It's an integer coefficient. And you can just divide both sides by three. In math, we undo 
times by division. And that's what's happening here, three times x. So let's see if I show this over here. Divide by three, divide by three. Three over three is just one. They cancel out, they divide out. Negative nine divided by three is negative three. So number nine goes inside the house, the top number divided by three, that's the long division. And then it's just gonna be negative because different signs produce negative results. So remember that's um, rule number four and different signs produce negative results. Okay. okay, now for number six, um, you want to solve for x. So there's two, two steps you have to work with. In a little bit, we'll work with a negative five to isolate x, but not, not right away. First, you should work with the positive 2.9 by moving it to the other side of the equation with that 3.5 constant term. So the opposite of 2.9 is a minus 2.9. The 2.9 minus 2.9 cancel out, they zero out. And then you have 3.5, take away 2.9. And so if you, if you stack them uh, and just subtract, uh, you, you don't need any any fancy sign rule for that three. If you have like, for example, think about money, if you have $3.50, you can take away, uh, pay for something like right? $2.90, you can think of it that way. So if I subtract, make this five into a 15 and decrease that three into a, a two. So 15 minus 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, that's a 6. And 2, take away 2, is, is 0. And I bring this decimal down. OK, so it looks like you have 0 0.6. And then equals, and then you got negative 5x, okay, you're bringing that down. Okay, now to finish solving that, you want to divide by negative 5, by negative 5. So I come over here, and divide both sides by negative five. Okay, and now you have x equals, and, and let's see on the calculator when I divide 0. 0.6 or 0. 0.6 divided by negative five. Looks like that gives me negative 12 hundredths. And if I do this long division by hand, the numerator goes inside the house. Okay. And I'm actually going to leave the signs off because I know different signs produce negative results. So I know it's already going to be negative. And how many fives? Let me just pull this decimal up. How many fives go into six? Just one. Five times one is five. Six minus five is um, one. 
left over and then I'm going to add some zeros and 5 goes into 10 twice so so um, you see how this is taking shape same result except except different signs produce negative results so you just insert the negative there okay all right Okay, and seven, we have fractions, solving number seven. But still, similarly, you know, you want to concentrate first on, you know, I would concentrate first on moving that two fifths. It's in front of the variable x. And so I would move two fifths. And then the two fifths minus two fifths cancel out. So then you have negative one half x. And then you're going to need common denominators whenever you add and subtract fractions with common denominators. So um, find common denominators for negative five. Oh, just let me just say five. Denominator is five and four. Right, five and four. LCD equals LCM. Okay, so five times one is five. Five times two is 10. Five times three is 15. Five times four is 20. And then let me stop there. I think it's going to be 20. And then you just go with the four. Four times one is four. Four times two is eight. 4 times 3 is 12, 4 times 4 is 16, 4 times um, 5 is 20, and you, you do have a match, okay, so it looks like the LCD, LCM is 20, okay, so now you're building up the fractions over here, so you're going to put little times, Little times here. Okay, so you look at the four, four times what is 20? One, two, three, four, five, four times five. So these are gonna be five, seven times five. Seven times five is 35. Five times four is 20. Okay. On the bottom, five times what is 20? One, two, three, four, five times four is 20 and that is um, negative two times four so that's a negative eight so you have 35 over 20 minus eight over 20 okay and 35 minus eight again you don't need a fancy sign number for that and i think that just gives you 27 35 minus eight it's 27, so this is equal to 27 over 20. And I don't, I don't think that can be reduced. Um, 27 and 20, I know three goes into 27, but three doesn't go into 20. Yeah, so I don't think that can be reduced. If it, if it could be reduced, if we could reduce it if you wanted to, but yeah, I don't think that can be reduced. So. But now, now look at your coefficient, uh, negative one half. See that? That's that's a, a fraction coefficient. Since you have a fraction coefficient, you're encouraged to multiply by its reciprocal. Multiply by its reciprocal. So your the reciprocal of a negative one half 
reciprocal of negative one half is a negative two over one. Okay, so reciprocal just means, you know, flip. It doesn't, it doesn't mean change its sign. It doesn't mean take the opposite sign. You're just flipping it. So it's still going to be negative, but it's a negative two over one. So then, so then I'll have, um, I'm not sure where to put that. Then I'll have, let me put it over here. Then I'll have um, negative two over one times negative one half x equals, let's see if I can squeeze this, um, 27 over 20 times negative two over one. So, um, I'm multiplying both sides by negative two over one. So I'm multiplying this by negative two over one. I'm multiplying this by negative two over one. That's what I'm doing here. Okay. And then this this side basically just gives you x. It cancels out because if you multiply across negative two times negative one is two and the bottom one times two is two with respect to x, but then two over two is just one x, which is just x, x equals. So a lot of times we just do this, we just say, okay, two goes into two one time, and that just gives you x, so you can cancel those out there, okay? okay. These also, you know, are already one, they cancel out. And then across over here, 27 times negative 2 and 20 times 1. So 27 times negative 2 is negative 54. And 20 times 1 is 20. OK, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reduce that. These are both even, so I'm going to reduce by 2 negative 54 divided by 2 is negative 27. 20 divided by 2 is 10. So it looks like we get negative 27 over 10. And that's an improper fraction, OK? It's improper. And that, um, and we're okay with that. They just said solve the equation. They didn't say it had to be a mixed number. But if they did, if they did want a mixed number and they had the palette for that, you'd have to do long division. Twenty-seven divided by ten. The numerator goes inside the house, and that goes into that twice. It's twenty with just seven left over remainder. Remember this goes clockwise like this. So it's two and seven over 10. And it's gonna be negative, negative two. Negative two and seven over 10. Okay, now for number eight, uh, we're going to solve for y. So I'm going to start by moving the negative two thirds, and I'm going to add positive two thirds to both sides of the equation. 
And then this, the, the two thirds and the minus two thirds, they fall off. So over here you have uh, y over three. And then on this side, you have seven whole, whole plus the fractional part, fractional part and the whole seven plus two thirds is seven and two thirds. Seven plus two thirds is seven and two thirds. And so you can, you can do that. And I'm going to uh, change this to a mixed number. I'm gonna do a little times and a little plus. And also on this side, this is really, uh, there's a magic one right here. Magic one that usually books don't bother writing one y over three, which really is just, um, yeah, one third, it's one third y. There's an imaginary one right here. The book doesn't bother writing, but it, it's like one third, one third x, or excuse me, one third y, one third y equals, and now we have this. So you're gonna multiply uh, three times seven, and then you're going to add two, and it's going to all be over three. So three times seven plus two. So you have one third x equals three times seven is 21, 22, 23. all over three. Okay, and then to finish solving that, um, notice how you have a coefficient of one third. So you should multiply by the reciprocal. So we should multiply both sides by um, three over one. So multiply by reciprocal which is Three over, 3 over 1. Reciprocal of 1 over 3 is 3 over 1. So I'm going to show that right here. I'm going to put 3 over 1 times 1 third x equals 3 over 1 times 20 third over 3. Okay, so remember this side just cancels out 3 over 3. You can do this. It divides out. You can do that. That's just going to give you x, okay? Over here, multiply across 3 times 23. Looks like that's 69. 1 times 3 is 3. And then 69 divided by 3. is 23, is 23. Y equals 23. So let me go to some of the exercises that the math department made. Um, I think I'm going to use this to write one problem down. I think I'll keep that in that. Here we go. So the math department made like five problems. Okay, so you want to solve your equation, express 
Your answer is an integer, simplified fraction or decimal rounded to two decimal places. If you're gonna make a decimal, they do one rounded to do two decimal places. So one says um, 4b minus 11 equals negative 11, okay? So you wanna solve for v. And probably what you should do, probably be good for you to like pause the video and work it first on your own and then turn it back on. And then I would come on and say, okay, did, did you get for number one, did you get zero? Did you get zero? So um, yeah, so maybe I can do this. Um, I'll put the answers on the side. Like for one, you should get zero. For two, you should get seven. For three, you should get negative six. So then you should like, you know, pause the video and, and work them out, see if you can get that. And then turn the video back on. And then if you're not getting that, then you want to look to see where what the kind of mistakes that you made for that, if any, if any at all. Okay. So you look at the first one. Um, I started off, you know, highlighting the minus 11. I'm going to move that term over to isolate your V. And remember, negative 11 plus 11 equals zero. So you do want to write, you do, this zero you don't write down because you have 4v, something better to write down. But here, negative 11 plus 11, you will write down 11 because there's nothing else on this side to write. So you've got to write something down. On this side, you're going to write zero. Negative 11 plus 11 is zero. Now you're going to divide both sides by four. You're going to divide by the coefficient. Fours cancel out. Zero. Zero is, you know, zero divided by four is zero. You have to see that here. Zero divided by four is zero. Okay, number two. So I'm going to move the plus 14 over and subtract 14 on both sides. These cancel out, those are called additive inverses. So you have minus two u equals and zero negative 14. Zero plus a negative 14 is just a negative 14. So notice here how with here I use a subtraction property. Notice here how I'm using the subtraction property. Whereas on number one right here, I was using the um, addition property. And now here I'm going to divide by negative two. So I'm dividing by the coefficient. And then a negative divided by negative is a positive, and that gives you positive positive seven. Okay. And so this is this is rule number four, right? Same signs. Positive results. Same signs. Positive results. So rule four, this is 
multiplying or dividing two at a time, two numbers at a time, multiplying, dividing two numbers at a time. So this is two numbers at a time, same signs, positive results, different signs, negative results. Okay, three. I'm, I'm going to, um, I mean, there's, there's a couple ways you can do this. Um, one thing you can do if you want is you can, you can move either the minus 3w or the minus 18. I think I'm going to move the, the minus 3w and I'm going to use opposites on it, plus 3w, plus 3w. These will fall out. 0 plus 3w plus 3w equals negative 18. OK. And then, then I'm going to divide both sides by 3. And minus 18 divided by 3 is minus 6. OK. Now, if you wanted to move the the minus 18, I can show you in this example here. Yeah. See, here I move the minus 18. Minus 18 is plus 18, plus 18. This falls out. And then you have 0 plus 18. 18 equals negative 3w. And then, then you have to divide both sides by negative 3. And 18 divided by negative 3 is a negative six. So if you wanted to start this off by moving, uh, moving terms, right? We, uh, we added 18. That's a, that's another way you can solve this problem. We got the same thing, uh, W plus negative six. We got that over here. So whichever, whichever way you think is the easiest for you, you can do that. Okay. Okay, so uh, four work out four and it looks like this one should get a mixed number, um, negative four. And one thirds. And the directions it just said solve. It didn't say how to, how to write up the result. So this is coming from negative 13 over 3. Okay. So let me show you that. So let me let me start by Isolating u, let me, let me subtract 17 on both sides. This one equals 3u. And this is, remember, there's like always a little plus sign here when you stack these up 4 plus negative 17. So if you have 4 plus negative 17, that is rule number 2. They're going to want you to subtract. So 17 minus 4, four 7 to the 4 is 3. So it's the, uh, negative 13. This is larger. And then now I'm going to divide the sides. by both sides by negative 13. By negative 13 only, not, 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 not negative 13 W, just negative 13. And let's see. 
where did that actually where did that u come from that shouldn't be there so you have three u equals four minus 17 is a negative 13. I'm sorry, and then we're dividing by the coefficient. Sorry, so we're dividing by the coefficient. Sorry, and the coefficient is um, three. The, the threes fall out. And then, yeah, I don't know where the W came from. I don't know where the W, sorry. It's U, U. And so you have negative 13. That, that, that cannot be reduced. So that matches this. But if they want a mixed number, this is improper. If they want a mixed number, you just do long division where the 13 goes inside the house. So three goes into 13 about four times. And I'm gonna take off this little negative. We don't need that here. Three goes into 13 four times. Four times three is 12. 13 minus 12 is one. And that's your R, your remainder. And then it goes clockwise like this. So U is equal to four, and I think it was negative. So the negative goes in front of the mixed number. That's, your, that's the responsibility in the front. And then you have one third. And that's a mixed number. Okay, and then five uh, is, a, is an actual application of, let's see, you're talking about a tower and some trees. And basically, what you're going to do is you're going to solve. Um, you're going to substitute and then solve for x on this problem. So go ahead and read that. So one of the tallest self-supporting towers in the world is the Tokyo Sky Tree in Japan, which stands twenty two which stands two thousand eighty feet tall. So that's kind of where this comes from. Uh, metal Sino trees in California are among the tallest in the world. If five of these trees were stacked up on top of each other, they would still be shy. They would still be short. This 252.5 feet shorter than the Tokyo sky tree in Japan. Solve the following equation to determine the height of the tree. Okay, so you want to solve that for x, so we want to start by doing opposites on that number there and subtract it. So two, three, two. These fall down. Okay, so this here, I'm going to make this into a 10. Well, actually, what happens is um, you want to borrow, but you can't borrow from the zero. You have to borrow all the way from the eight. So I'm going to first decrease the eight and make the eight a seven. And then this becomes like a 10. But now I can borrow from this 10. Now this 10 decreases to a nine. 
and then this becomes the 10. So 10 take away five is five. Bring down your decimal. Okay, so remember this is, this is now 10. 10 take away five is five. Nine take away two is seven. Uh, seven take away five is two. And then uh, you can say you can say twenty take away two is eighteen. Okay, twenty take away two is eighteen. You can do that, or you know, or you can't do zero take away two, so you borrow you, you decrease that by one, and you make this zero ten. Ten minus two is eight. You want to take away nothing is one. And now you're gonna to have to divide by five. So you show them the steps. And then if I use the calculator, let's see if it goes into it evenly. 1827.5 divided by 5. It does. It says it goes in 365.5. And then this is the height of the tree. So this is probably X and feet and let me show you a long division for that pull up this test here divided by five so remember the numerator goes inside the numerator goes inside the house Five goes into 18 three times because that's 15. 18 minus 15, so you can set up three times. Bring down the two. Five times six is 30. Bring down the two. Or thir 32 minus 30 is two, and then bring down the seven. Five goes into 27. Five times it's 25. Seven. 27 minus 25 is 2. And then I think I can bring down one more number, 5. And it so happens 5 goes into 25 five times. Okay. All right. And oh, uh, by the way, in your vocabulary, these are these are all called um, these equations numbers one through five. Let's see, one through five. Double check. I believe are all conditional. Yes, are uh, um, uh, called. Conditional equations. So if you if you learn that now that will help you because in the next section 9.3 they talk about vocabulary and they have conditional and identities and contradictions. So it's better to go and learn one today's uh, these are condition equations, meaning what the equations one through five are called condition equations, meaning what meaning that they have. Meaning that they have meaning that they have um, only one solution. These equations are called additional equations. Mm -hmm. oh, they have one solution.
And there was one extra one I was gonna do on this last page. And it, I think this is, when I looked at it, we've already covered translating, but I don't know, for some reason, I, I did have it in my notes to remind me to show you. So let me just show that here. So it's not really nine, it's not really part of 9.2, but. Okay, so this is, has to do with you know your vocabulary. Some words you write forward, some some words you write reverse order. So this one says, from the sum of negative twelve and and twenty eight. So you should start with negative twelve plus twenty eight, and that's because they talked about the sum and both of these numbers, right? So from that sum, I might just put parentheses around it. Um, you want to subtract, so it's just subtraction, the sum of negative six and 19. Okay. So here's those two numbers at the back here. Right, and then you would just be working with that, tra translating that. Okay, so class, so this is rule number two adding two numbers with different signs. So let's subtract 28 minus 12, eight minus two is six, two minus one is one. So this is 16. And this has the larger absolute value, which happens to be positive. And over here, this is also rule number two. So I'm gonna subtract 19 minus six. Nine minus six is three. So that's like, that's a, a, a a 13 is to be negative. Okay. And then and then 16 minus 13 is just three. Okay. Okay. Right. So sorry if I, I think I may have dozed off a couple of times, but um, I'm pretty sure I got, I'm pretty sure I did the problems. Like if I made a mistake, I think I caught it correctly. So I think we'll be okay with that. Okay. Yeah, I hope, hope that lesson helps. Okay, work on your work. Good luck with that then. All right. Bye-bye.